So I'm probably going to regret saying this, but I have this idea in my head that, you know, every other Sims YouTuber or a lot of Sims YouTubers and a lot of people who don't do YouTube, but they are involved in the Sims community. I've had a go at making a save file. Uh, they've kind of made a file you can download. They've redone all the families. They've redone all of the houses and built new lots and all of that kind of thing. You can download their save file. As you guys know, I use a little Simsy save file for my uh, Not So Berry challenge. And I also use Plumbella save file for my vampire challenge, which I stream on More Claire Siobhan. Check a link in the description below if you haven't already. And I started remaking some of the characters recently. If you haven't checked back my other videos, I've remade the Goths. I've remade the Caliantes. And I've also remade the Pancakes. And it got me thinking, like, this is a really cool way for me to learn a little bit more about the game. And also just trying to learn the lore. Actually get to know the families and their houses a little bit. So I was like, you know what? I am going to try and remake the whole of each of these save files too. And I'm going to start with Willow Creek. So the first house I decided to take on was the Goth Mansion, which I actually found really difficult because honestly, this is a huge house on an absolutely tiny lot. I've played in this house a little bit before. I always thought it was kind of weirdly laid out, but I thought I'd give it a go because if you think about Sims, the first house and the first like set of people that you think about tend to be the Goths. They are iconic. They've been there since Sims 1. So I figured this would be the best house to give a go. And the reason it's moving at like 4,000 miles an hour is because I actually did this build over three streams, all of which were several hours long. So this took me a really, really long time. And I figured the best way to show it would be to speed it up and kind of do it as a speed build, which I know I don't normally do. But I actually think for this kind of thing makes way more sense. So please let me know if you like this format in the comments below. So one thing that is going to be really different about my save file compared to other people's save files is mine is going to be very CC heavy. But what I will do is if I do finish this save file, and that is a big if, and upload it, then I will actually um, link the CC creators that I'm using and where you can download the files. And I'm also trying to just stick to a few CC creators, such as Harry and Felix Andre, which you guys know that I use, Peacemaker, who make incredible stuff to make the outside of your house look good and also make the design inside look really good too. The other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to be making my save file pack specific. So, you know, you can download this and it'll only be base game. There are a bunch of save files that already do that. So I don't really feel like, you know, I'm going to just do mine where you're going to need all the packs to make it complete. And you're also going to need CC to make it complete. But it makes sense for my play style because I kind of came to the game several packs in anyway. And as you guys know, I very heavily use CC. So I am not going to lie. I found this house incredibly difficult to rebuild. Kind of started going down this like really gothic route of, not gothic, more like uh, medieval. I kind of wanted to do like a Tudor kind of vibes. I really liked the way that the front of the house looked when I made it all medieval. But I was like, you know what? If I do that, it's not going to look like the goth household that you guys know. And also it's going to end up looking like it should be in Windenburg. And if I ever get around to redesigning Windenburg, I want to use all of that like more tudor -y stuff because I really like that. And a lot of the houses near like my town center have that like tudor -y look. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be so fun. I'm going to get to like, recreate that Tudor style. But it just, it wouldn't make sense when compared with the Windenburg stuff. And it wouldn't look like the goth household. And the other thing I found really hard was the layout of the goth mansion. It's kind of unusual. It's, it's a bit strangely laid out, honestly. So what I've done instead is I made the bottom half open plan just because you know me, I love open plan living. I wanted to open the living room up into the kitchen just so that everything felt a bit more open and spacious. And the other thing you can probably tell from the dining room is I wanted to change the colors up a little bit. So I know that the goth household is a lot of red and black. And I get that that is their colors, but it doesn't need to be the color of every single room in the house. I just found it too much. I found it a little bit boring. So I mixed it up for the dining room. However, I did keep the living room with the most traditional colors. I mixed it up in there a little bit as well. There was the piano upstairs, but I kind of felt like it was a bit lost upstairs on its own. So, so I brought it downstairs that if you're entertaining people, the piano's there and you can kind of like listen to it whilst you're hanging out with them. I moved the bar in there initially, but honestly, I was starting to really struggle to fit things in. I wanted like a formal seating area, but also a place to like display like like, you know, some of their pictures and paintings and vases and all of that kind of thing. And I probably tried like 700 rugs on almost every area of this. I wanted to keep as well the, the chess table. And I feel like in the end, I kind of got where I wanted. Um, I wanted really to keep the bar in there, but it just, it was too squishy, especially when I came out into the hallway and realized that the door frame was kind of in a bit of an unusual position. I had to end up switching that up a little bit as well. But I'm pretty happy with the way that we got that to look. The kitchen, I found honestly pain. So one of the things that I, th I thought the kitchen shape was 
bizarre. So I ended up moving the whole bathroom over, which is why I had to switch things up in the living room a little bit as well. But the entrance to the kitchen was so narrow. And I'm like, this, I don't know, the goth kitchen for me has always just felt super weird. So I widened the kitchen so I could put a proper kitchen at the front and then have like an informal dining space in there too, because they did have that, but it was a little bit smaller. And I was like, okay, if you had a house this big, then you're gonna need like, you know, there's, there's five people living in the household. So the dining room they have in there, like the informal dining room should probably be bigger as well. And I tried so many colors on the kitchen. I just couldn't figure out the right units to put in there. I believe they are the Harry units, potentially out of the country or um, from the brownstone collection, potentially too. The front door is the brownstone collection. Honestly, download everything Harry makes. I love her stuff so much. It is so incredible. And the curtains are from the organic collection by Hello, uh, uh, Harry and Felix Andrew, those really long ones that I tried to use in as many rooms in this house as possible, just because I think they look really, really good. And what I tend to do is I stack my curtains. So I'll do like an outer curtain. That's like the main curtain. And then try and have an inner curtain in there too, because I don't know. I just feel like it looks really formal. So you'll notice in a few rooms in the house I've done that. I think it adds like a really formal edge to it and just make things look really good. Um, I want it to go crazy with plants, but I don't think it makes sense for the goth household to actually have a crazy number of plants in it. So I ended up downscaling my original plant dreams. And instead I'm like, if I'm making this house, it should look like it represents the goth family a little bit more. So I tried to do that. I tried to keep the color scheme. I kept a lot of like the really grand like portraits and all that kind of thing. I added curtains here between the living room and the kitchen. Cause I'm like, if you're looking through into from the really formal room to like your informal seating area, it's a little bit of a clash. I don't know. I overthink things in Sims. So I I wanted to put some curtains there just to sort of hide that a little bit and um did a little downstairs bathroom there as well that bathroom's shifted in position it shifted along just because it makes way more sense to lend a little bit more room to the kitchen and i kept a lot of the hallway the same actually i changed um like the wallpaper i think and i also like changed the front door but I kept the suits of armor there. I, I thought the floor kind of worked um, and it works still with the new dining room. So I'm like, I'm going to keep this area at least the same as it is now. Um, but just switch some other bits up to be a little bit more to my personal taste. And I love those windows. There's only, that's the only place I use the windows that are in the hallway, but I don't know. I just thought that they kind of worked. And as you can see from the outside, I changed the top tower to like, I spent so much time you don't even understand on the roof. The roof and um, just trying to make the front of the house roofing system look different because I thought the top just being all open was kind of dead. So I switched that up a bunch. And then the other thing that I honestly felt like I had to do um, is if I'm remaking the goth mansion in the original goth games, uh, not the goth games, in the original Sims games, one like unusual but cool thing about the goth household is that it had a graveyard in the back garden. Now I was trying to fit a pond in originally because I'm like, what do I do with the back garden? Like it was just paved over. It was kind of boring. And then I realized, why don't we bring back the goth family graveyard in the back? And if you go on debug, there is a bunch of graveyards. There's a lot of packs that have graveyards in them. So there was a really good like, originally I was looking at Snowy Escape because that's the only one I could think of that had it. But then when I looked into it, there is a bunch of packs that have their own gravestones and some of them look really old as well which I figured like the goth household, they're meant to be this family that has been in um, the, the living in the goth house for generations and generations. They're like old money. So I kind of figured um, one, we're bringing back the graveyard, but two, I tried to make it look like there was a bunch of different age gravestones in there so that you've got like, you know, great, 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 great grandpa goth in the garden and even a few pet gravestones as well. And I changed the back of it here as well so that that is actually a debug wall and a debug gate. So Sims technically can walk through it. But I figured the back of this house is so pretty that, you know, you're looking out onto that nice little stream thing going by the canal that I wanted the goth to have access to that because it kind of made sense. And then with these gravestones, I tried to make, I added like the debug like bumps to make it look like there's recently buried or like, you know, in the past 50 years or whatever. And then you've got the flat ones at the back. The recent ones also have flowers that look like they were put there kind of recently. And then the ones at the back have like, you know, some like dead leaves or like little shit, like little grass. They're a bit overgrown, you know, because they're like five generations old or whatever. They're not as, 
immediate family, so you end up just, I guess, not 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 caring about them as much, but just not tending to their graves as much. So as you guys can probably see, the other thing I did was add a lot of greenery to the background, and um, that is because I actually raised the foundations a lot on this house. They were already pretty high, but I raised them a little bit more because I wanted like some really cool steps at the back there, and I just like the idea of it being this really tall, imposing goth household. And because I did that, um, I added all of the ivy growing up the bottom just so you didn't just have this block wall. I put some little flower boxes on the side as well there. And all of the windows, I don't know if you can tell, are replaced in this house. Um, to the point where it was a little bit sad because I finally decided on like a nice way to decorate the house after trying so many different like brick and stone combos of the original kind of dark brick vibes and then like stone for the bits that have that more like a rectangular shape, but you can't see it that much because I ended up going for such big windows, but I really like the big windows. I think they suit the house a lot. And also it means I can dress them with really huge wind uh, huge curtains. And then I had a little bit of a conundrum again because I decorated the downstairs with the piano. I moved the piano downstairs. I now just had this big, huge area upstairs and I didn't know what color to do with it. I didn't know what to do with it. It just kind of felt a bit dead, but I was like, okay, these goths are meant to be like old money. So they probably have a bunch of like really expensive things that go back generations and generations. Generations. So originally I put like a T-Rex head there, but I was like, okay, maybe one of the goths like, you know, discovered the like new world or whatever, or like went on an adventure and ended up coming back with like loads of these really cool, like, you know, little sort of memorabilia, little artifacts, archaeological, ar archaeological finds. So I was like, what is something so grand and so old money? And so, you know, we have been here for generations. We've been living in this area for generations. Why not have their own little display set place upstairs, which is literally just showcasing that, yes, we have wealth, we're old money, but we literally have things in this household that we have our own museum. We have our own mini museum. So I think that's either going to be a love it or hate it idea from this, but I just thought it was a cool thing to have and really like an ultimate flex of how you know, cool and like, it felt like something the goths might have. They're meant to be a bit Adam's Family-esque. So having an entire like creepy exhibit sort of I thought was quite cool. And then I got onto what was probably one of the more difficult tasks, especially for me. So as you guys know, when I try and build a house, I am pretty good at making outsides of houses look really cute. I am horrible at trying to like design how the inside space works. And as a result, I end up with lots of very bizarrely shaped rooms. It's definitely not my strong point. I really struggle with it. And I hated the way the upstairs was laid out. I really didn't like the fact that the kids room was like in the attic. I thought that was like really lame. So I wanted to change that up. And um, as a result, have like a proper master with an ensuite and then a one kid's room, a second kid's room, and a shared bathroom upstairs, or just like a separate bathroom. And so eventually I did manage to find something that I think works. It gives the kids big, nice rooms. It has like a nice big bathroom and it has a really grand master room. And I still had the area out here where you've got the balcony, where, um, you know, there's this nice little cute area in front of it. And unfortunately, the only way I could figure to get into the attic was ladders, which I really, really didn't want to do. But like the spiral staircases on The Sims are so freaking big. I tried like a way to make it work and it was just going to ruin my cute upstairs hallway sitting area where you looked out on all of the peasants outside. So I'm like, well, I can't do that. So I ended up switching it out to um, a ladder and I'm like, that's totally fine. I think it still works aesthetically and... As you'll see later on in the build, my attic is no longer like a functional room. It's meant to be like a little bit of an Easter egg instead. So it's fine. Um, I then moved on to the master bedroom. So this originally was another black and red room. And I was just like, I've done so many black and red rooms at this point. I'd really like to mix the colors up a little bit and do something else. So I originally really wanted blue. And I was like, the, the her bed should go like in between all the windows because it looks so vibey and cool there. But I was sort of like originally going for this and I still really like this idea. I like doing the the cabinets behind the bed. So it's almost like a full wall slash storage area. And then you can have your side tables coming out from there. But um, I couldn't find a good combination of bed to cabinets behind that worked that still had the grand goth feel and didn't end up looking too modern. So I think I'll take that same idea and do it on a different build, but it felt too modern for the goths. And I was trying really hard to keep things looking like a right goth vibe. And I ended up instead going for like a gray and yellow theme, which I think works really well. I switched out the bed position. I kind of made the entrance the way a bit of a like walk-in wardrobe. And um, we still have that ensuite bathroom in there too. 
and I think I think the eventual vibes feel goth. I know it's not black and red, which a lot of people won't like, but I still think it looks quite cool. I then decided what is another like really glamorous, cool thing I can put in there on like a chaise. So I got like a chaise, a chaise, a chaise, a chaise, I don't know, that I figured that um, Bella would like drape herself on and be like, oh, and like read a book or whatever and just like look an absolute queen. So um, I thought that would work as well. Now the bathroom is a little bit smaller than what I wanted because my original plan was to have like a cool corner bath and I really like that idea. And then I'm like, okay, I can't fit it in. So I'll do a bath on a platform. But every time I put the platform in, it would take out, you know, like the outer part of the house, like the, the roof trim or like the trim thing. It would come into the house and I couldn't not make it happen. Like the platforms really mess with like your trim things, not the roof trim, but you know what I mean? Like the little artifice thing. I don't know. But it kept messing it up. So I'm like, okay, I can't do that. But I really want a nice big bathroom with his and her sinks and like his and hers dressing gowns. And I had one um, side of the sink that would have like just a little pot for his shaving foam for his beard. Uh, sorry, his mustache. And then on her side, I put like perfume bottles and nail varnishes and like uh, a little makeup tray. So it felt like a proper his and hers sink, which I thought was kind of cool, cool as well. And then on the outside of the balcony, I just wanted to give them like a cool vibey place to just sit, get away from the kids, look out onto the canal. And I did at one point try and add a hot tub to it, but one, architecturally and structurally, I wasn't sure if it would work if the balcony would just collapse. And two, again, I just don't think it fitted the goth vibe very well. So I went for like another little plenty area and I think we ended up with something nice. Then I wanted to move on to Cassandra Goth. So if you guys have seen my redo of Cassandra Goth, in my version, I kept her like Wednesday Adams vibes, but I actually bleached her hair white, <laughs> which you might either love or hate, but I thought it looked really, really cool. And I wanted to give her a cool bedroom that kind of showed that, you know, she was a little Wednesday. She was kind of rebellious and cool. And I kind of decided early on that purple was going to be the right style for her. Then I really struggled to find purple swatches that I liked and that matched. And I wanted to have this grand bed and all the beds felt too modern. And I just really, really struggled with trying to get her something that worked. Um, I literally must have tried a thousand wallpapers. I think ended up on a vampire's one. And then I was like, okay, how can I make her bed look super grand and cool? None of the four posters looked um, like old fashioned and ornate enough to match the house. So I ended up just making my own four poster bed using um, like a platform, columns and the little trim thing that connects the columns together. I added and like changed the size of a bunch of curtains to go around the edges. So it looked like, it always reminds me of, um, you know, the Christmas Carol, the, uh, I've only ever seen the Muppets version, but you know, the, the ghost of Christmas past, and, like you open the bed sheets and he's there. It kind of reminded me of that. And I thought that that was kind of like goth and cool and epic. So I was like, okay, we'll put that in. And then I gave her an area with her own little posters. I kind of went ham on fairy lights just because it fit the vibes very well. And I did play test this, play test this at the end. And you know, I never play test. I play tested it and I did a little tweak and it does function. So the bed works. Um, I just needed to drop the platform down one. If you ever make a platform bed like this, just know that you have to only put it up one level or else the Sims won't be able to get into it. If it's one level higher, they can get in. If it's two level higher, they can't. And then for Alexandra's bedroom, oh, I kind of, we decided that he was going to be a Potterhead. So I went for the, um, what is it? The Henry Trotter. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to look what up this, this is called for you guys because it's such good CC. Okay, Pufferhead. For some reason, I had Henry Trotter stuck in my head. It's called the Pufferhead Collection. It is such a cute set of incredible children's items. They are obviously Harry Potter themed, but there's also a few swatches on there that don't have to be as Harry Potter themed. And they just make like incredible stuff for kids' rooms. So I basically used everything from Pufferhead in his room. And then I did this bathroom and kind of in my head as I was making it, I was trying to make it a little bit creepy. So I like the idea that on the nighttime the kids don't like going to the bathroom because it sort of feels weird and haunted and in their heads it's haunted so we, we've got the the haunted bathroom and then upstairs i knew with this room i kind of wanted it to be like an abandoned kind of creepy room upstairs so um i kind of redid it with all the wallpaper torn it's the kind of the house that they don't use anymore maybe you know generations past this is like where maybe the servants the goth servants like lived but they don't have like servants or anything anymore so so instead, it's just kind of been left to go to ruin. So I stained all the floor and stuff, but there is still access to get there. And I put this little area out here. I put some little juices around it. It's kind of like a little secret Easter egg area that I don't know, maybe Cassandra sneaks up there to get away from her parents. Maybe, you know, one of the parents sneaks up there. I just like this idea that someone sneaks up there, drinks juice and spies on the neighbors. I felt like it fit Cassandra's rebellious edge. Oh, this is my eventual, uh, 
this is where I ended up with the final redesign of the goth mansion. I spent a long time putting the wisteria up the windows, but I don't know. So many houses where I love have like stuff growing up the house that I just had to do it. The front is very planty. But, you know, it is a Clash of On remake. I think with this one, it is much more interior design remake than it is architectural remake. But I'm still pretty happy at where we ended up. I think it looks way grander with the huge big arches and loads of access in there. I love that room. I feel like I would be happier living in this house now. I think it looks really, really grand and beautiful. And, um... It looks like it fits them, I think. I'm not 100% happy with that rug, but I feel like we ended up with something quite cool. I think the kitchen is tons better than the original kitchen as well. I really like that we have restored the goth family graveyard. If you haven't played the older games, you're probably like, okay, that is like almost too macro bay. I don't know how to say that word. It's almost too goth. You've taken it a step too far. But genuinely, the older games had this and the ghosts would come out and like haunt the goths. Like it was a legit thing. So I think it's quite cool to bring it back and have a little bit of a throwback to the older goths, you know, keep that canon. I don't really know why they didn't do it in this game, to be honest. I adore that dining room. I love it. I love the oversized plants. I love the way it looks. I love the curtains. I love the colors. I understand changing it from, from red is not going to be from everyone, but me personally, I really like it. I'm sorry. I just really like it. And then this area is kind of love it or hate it, but... I think it's fun. It's fun to imagine that goths over the years have traveled the world and brought back slash stole things and it's kind of memorabilia for us all to enjoy. <laughs> I like that master bedroom. I think this bit's a little bit squishy with the with the walk-in wardrobe, but I can kind of see them getting ready in there. And I think another thing to remember is old houses aren't laid out ideally. So you can modernize, you can try and knock some walls through, but you're gonna be stuck with awkward hallways, awkward sized shaped rooms because some walls are support walls. We've realized this because we've been like trying to change things to our house and there's certain walls you just can't get rid of and can't change and you're always gonna be left with slightly higgledy piggledy rooms. So I hope that I've kind of taken it into a better layout, but also still kind of acknowledge that the rooms are gonna be slightly weirdly shaped. Um, that is how Cassandra looks in my game with the bleach, bleach hair. You can download her. She's on the gallery. And you can also check out my video of me remaking all of the goths. So you can kind of see where I've come from. But, um, I think that, I think she looks really cool like this. I think she, she suits the, the, the hair. I think if you've got black eyebrows, you, you suit like bleach hair. Really cool. I think it looks really nice. And then I really like Alexandra's Potter head room. I would, I would have loved this room as a kid. I kind of figured since he's meant to be like, you know, a bit of a, brainy kid that I'd put him in Ravenclaw and go for blue colors and then I like the creepy attic um you can't see it too much from the outside as well just because the windows and the curtains so it don't worry it doesn't destroy the aesthetics because you can see into it um because it's so high up and then I like our little secret area too so let me know what you guys thought of my remake of the goth household should i keep doing this should i try and do the whole of willow creek should i actually try and make my own save i want to know what you guys think let me know as well if you like this format because sometimes if i want to spend like you know a good like six hours or whatever doing a um remake of a house or doing a build i can't do it in my traditional video format of like recording as i go along but doing this kind of speed build could be a nice solution so if you guys like it let me know and I'll see you in another video. Bye!